I don't know if you can see the amount of midges around my head, but there's a lot. Alright, so let's talk about beasties, ticks and midges, how dangerous are they, how much of annoyance are they, how prevalent are they, what you can do to protect yourself from them, and what to do when one of the swines is on you. First of all, we're going to take a look at some chemical preventative methods. There's this big thing that you'll always hear folk going on about Avon skin so soft. Aye, the SAS used it and all that. And I'm... Right, fine. Avon skin so soft, chemical in here called citronella. The Avon skin so soft that they had in the UK and their new release didn't have citronella in it. Now you can still buy Avon skin so soft with it in it, but you have to get it. Now, in my experience, using it is gentle on the skin, it's got jobby oil or whatever, jojoba, jojoba, or whatever whatever that is, dry oil. You put it on, it's not harsh chemicals, and it does work, it does work, it keeps them away. However, it says dry oil, but the midges do still land, they, and, and they stick to you. And compared to some other treatments, it's definitely not as effective. Now I've done this sitting in a midge infested camp one night cooking dinner. Girlfriends in the tent all dubbed up. I'm cooking dinner like a dafty. Sprayed uh, Avon Skin So Soft in one forearm and I sprayed smidge on the other forearm. And when I was cooking away, I seen which was the most effective. Smidge was the most effective, not Avon Skin So Soft. Like I said, all the midges stuck to Avon's skin so soft. Now, especially if you're hiking or working away and you're sweating, Avon's skin so soft, although it's a dry oil, it's still oil, it's kind of like, the midges stick to it and it washes, it comes off of you, it rubs off of you. Whereas smidge, if you spray it on, it, it, it lasts, reapply every eight hours. So once you've applied that, it's, it's on you, it works, it's dry, and it's definitely more effective. So it's a myth. See Avon Skin So Soft. It's a bloody myth. Smidge is better. Don't listen to folk. Now, these are the two chemicals that you apply to your skin. Don't worry about this stuff. I'm going to talk about protecting dogs, my wee mozzie here, from midges and ticks with some of these products. Later on, I'll put a link up to a, a video on this sort of stuff. Now, the next chemical treatment we'll look at, and I can't pronounce this, but Life Systems, what's that? EX4 Plus Anti-Mosquito. It's the, the active compound in it is perithrin. I, I can't even pronounce it, but that's the active ingredient in it, and it's super effective against ticks. In fact, if ticks come in contact with it, they die. They literally die in like five to 10 seconds. So it's not a repellent, it's actually a killer. So ticks, if you have this, about you, ticks ain't coming near you. Now this isn't a direct skin application, this is a treatment for fabrics. So that's your clothing and your kit. Now, in addition to that, we can then transition onto what I believe to be the most effective way of controlling midges and ticks, which is your clothing system, it's a barrier. This kit, which is from Crag Hoppers. Now Crag Hoppers is a really underrated bit of outdoor clothing. It's travel clothing that's not really in this sort of like hiking market, marketed and branded more as like a, a safari sort of dude. It's treated with this stuff, Nausea Life. See it there? Nausea Life. Whereas it's got a big thing. That is a snake belt by the way. See if you ain't rocking a snake belt, I'm not talking to you. Right? That's what it's all about. Nausea Life, there you go and it says permanent insect repellent clothing. Now, this has the permanent impregnated into the fabric and it's guaranteed for like some like 70 washes. And after that, you know, you can top it up, you just spray it on. Now, I prefer that, of course, rather than treating the clothing that I have because then I don't need to worry about it. And, it, and if you're honest, oh, only 70 washes. 70 washes is a lot of wearing. It actually is if you think about it. So, we've got the chemical treatment for the skin, which I don't like, I prefer a barrier. But yeah, I like chemical treatment on my barrier clothing. So barrier clothing, what I'm all about with that. Now, it's got loads of different attributes, vents here, different lightweight, breathable fabrics, UV protection. It's really underrated for hiking, in my opinion. But that, that's just me. Now, you may look like safari guy, but 
I'm not bothered about how I look. I'm bothered about how effective the stuff is. It keeps me cool, it keeps me protected, and that's all that matters to me. So the trousers, they're baggy, they're lightweight. It's UV protection. They've got the bug protection in them. I tuck them into my socks. I've got Crag Hoppers Nausea Life socks. Spray my shoes. I put my Nausea Life socks in. I tuck my Nausea Life trousers in to my socks. I put on my little gaiters, the wee trail runner gaiters, which are sprayed with Then if a tick comes up onto my shoe, it'll die. If it comes up and goes onto my gaiter, it'll die. If it goes under my gaiter, onto my sock, it'll die. If it goes up my sock, onto my trousers, it'll die. That's a lot of climbing and a lot of protection for a tick to get up into so a crack where it can get in. But even if it gets all the way up my leg, I've got my shirt tucked in to the waistband and my trousers. But I've got a Nausea Life shirt, I've got a Nausea Life gilet, I've even got a bloody Nausea Life hat. All this treated clothing, I've never had a tick on me in my entire life. I've had them fall on me, like if I've had my sleeves rolled up, I've opened a gate, a tick fell on and I pinged it off. That was one time I noticed one. I've never had a tick actually attached to me. It's not only the chemical protection, the physical barriers, but also your mindfulness of the fact that there are these beasties out there. We'll get on to midges in a wee minute because you can't ignore the fact that they're there because they're pestering you like maniacs. But just don't, whenever I sit down, if it's grassy, I'll get my ground sheet and I'll put it down, I'll sit on that. If I'm sitting on anything else, I'll put my ass pad down. I, I never lean back and put my hands in grass. I'm always conscious if, if there's long, tall, say, ferns. I'll roll down my sleeves, I'll put on my peripheral treated sun gloves and I'll hold my arms up with my trekking poles up high and I'll walk through to prevent them getting on me. I'm always thinking about avoiding contact with foliage that may have ticks in them so they don't attach. Because that's how they attach to you. They're sitting there waiting for you to come by and then as you brush by them, they attach you and then they crawl up to and find a nook and cranny that they're happy with and then they start doing their thing. Now, like I said, tick prevention, ticks are bad, bad things. The amount of ticks in Scotland, at least, and probably all over the place has risen dramatically. Now we're talking about ticks and now we're in camp, there's no wind, we're in shade, we're moving next to water, it's midgey a go, go You could start spraying yourself up. With, you could wear shorts, you could wear your t-shirt, spray yourself up. You'll still be tormented all up in your face. I don't carry these. No use. What I do is, snake belt on and all that. But I get, get you out the road the now. I get my shirt, my Nausea Life shirt, which is tick repellent, not midgey. I put it on. Now I've lost a wee bit of weight here, so bear with me, right? That'll, that'll do, that'll do. As you can see, this Nausea Life shirt has a, a dub, it's actually got a double collar, so it comes up right high. So I dub that up. My Nausea Life hat, pull those tabs down, and it's got this chap. I get my Hermitry. treated gloves, I put them on. And for some reason, midges don't seem to be that interested in the tips of your fingers. I don't know why, they're not that bothered. And then I get my midget net out for my cutting. I make sure not to disrupt the tash. And what with the collar dubbed up? I can't, I mean, I'm wearing about a million layers of clothes here. But with that collar turned up and that doing like that, and that's me totally protected from ticks and midges with no chemical treatment other than what I've treated my clothing with, nothing directly on my skin. If, and if you're eating, if you're eating, you just get some of that and you eat it and you put it back down. Might be a minor annoyance. You'll, I'll show you, I'll show you a video of me doing that. It's no big deal. You, it's, it's, as long mm. as you're prepared and you know what you're doing, it's fine. When I've been, I, I don't, I don't worry about insects when I'm hiking because I prepare properly and I can deal with. It. Right now, see you do get a tick on you. Hold on. Is that a tick there? Yeah. See you do get a tick on you. You need to remove it properly. Folks say tweezers and all that, you can have your wee Swiss army knife. I'm a, a lover of the Swissy. You can, in a pinch, you can get the, the, the tweezers off of that and pull them off. You get the tweezers as close to your skin as you can. You twist, you pull it off. What I've done in the past in a pinch is I've cut a strip off like a loyalty card. I've cut a narrow V in the end and I've bent it at right angles to mimic one of these guys. 
and I've twisted it round round and I've managed to actually get the tick off with that. So you can improvise. But what we have here, the Tom Tick Twisters. There's a big one and there's a wee one. The wee ones are for wee ticks and the big ones are for the ones that have been feeding on you for a while. If they've been feeding on you for a while, that is not a good sign because the longer they're on you, the more likely they've transmitted nastiness into you. What you do with these is you take it out, it's a V, you slot it in, you twirl it and you use the leverage at the right angle to pop it out. Once you've popped it out, it'll probably be stuck in the V. Make sure, look in your skin, make sure there's nothing left in there. Look in the little tick twister, make sure the tick's intact. You'll see it's wee ugly cutting. Right, now, if it's bigger, what I would suggest you do is you take the tick, you get a bit of your tape that hopefully you've got wrapped around your trekking pole for repairs and stuff. You get something flat, you, if you've got a notebook or a card or anything flat in your bag. And you get the tick and you tape it to that. The tick will die. The reason for that is a couple of days down the line, if you get a rash, a bullseye rash is what you're looking for, and that, that's not a good sign. If you get, within the next couple of weeks of being bitten, any sort of symptoms, illnesses or anything like that, that's not a good sign. If you get anything, basically, you want to go to the doctor. Now, if you go to the doctor and say, I've been bitten by a tick, I'm worried because I've noticed this and that. If you've got the tick that bit you, you can give it to them and they can send it away for testing to see if it does have Lyme disease or not. So keep that wee tick that's bit you if you're worried about it, if it's been filling. If it's a wee jobby, then you're probably fine. But better safe than sorry, don't mess about it, because Lyme disease is really debilitating. I think they call it like, what is it, the Great Pretender or something like that? But in manifest, Lyme disease is it's like, it crops up, it calms down, it blows up. Sometimes it might be like these symptoms, it might be those symptoms. It's a, po it's a total nightmare. And if you, Catch it in time, it can be treated with antibiotics, so don't mess about with Lyme disease. It's something serious. Look at these products that we have. Look at the methods that we have of dealing with them. Always be mindful of ticks and the problems that they pose, and you'll be totally fine to go anywhere. There's nothing to worry about. It's just being careful and being prepared, and that's what it's all about. So if you're interested in how to look after your dogs, if you've got a dog, See you then. If not, cheers. Cheerio.